Thanks for joining us again. Uh, today we want to talk about scanning. Now it's really important, particularly if you're an equity investor, that you have specific rules that you're looking for and that's where scanning can come in. It can help you find and identify securities that are worth more investigation. And so I want to show you exactly how we can set that up and we're going to touch on a little bit of the scripting language as well, but we'll talk more about that and we've got a whole course all focus on scripting language at the uh, learn.optima.com uh, website. Uh, you can look there for the scripting courses as well. All right, so let's come in here to Optima. And again, up the top menu, what you're going to see is we have searches. So we can click on that and we can click on Scanning Manager. All right, so we've come into the Scanning Manager. First thing I can do is come up here to the New button and say, I want to add a new item or a new scan. Now you can create new groups and you can have different groups of scans with um, headings, etc., depending on how you organize your work. I can come along here now and say, right, the scan type, I'm looking for multiple codes. The group that I want to scan is going to be, let's say the S&P 500. So I'm just going to select that and hit close. Uh, membership current. Now, with some of our symbol lists in Optima, we have survivorship bias um, free data. So we know when a security was added to the index and when it was removed. And the, the exact date where that starts, you can read about in our knowledge base. We, for the different symbol lists, we show the dates that it's available for. Um, but so I can say I want the historical membership or I want current. Now, typically on a scan, I'm only going to use the current members because I'm looking at this point in time. But you can see that with the um, date range, it's set to last bar, but I could go back to a selected range, let's say in 2008, uh, because maybe I want to test would my scan have gotten me out of these securities before the crash or something like that. In that case, we need to use historical membership. So we focus just on the members that were in the S&P 500 back at that time. But we're going to leave that current uh, date range last bar because uh, we want to know on the last piece of data that we have, will our, our criteria be met? And then I've got to come and add my criteria. Now there is a number of predefined criteria that I could select from, uh, but the other way is I can come to new and I can start typing in a criteria of what I'm looking for. What I want to know is the close above a 20 period moving average. So I just type in MA. now. I know these functions. If I started typing moving because I didn't know that the function was MA, nothing comes at the top, but I can see here, are you searching for, are you searching for moving average? Use MA. So it's teaching me as I go that I need to use MA. Now with Optima and the scripting, all you need to do is click on a function like this and you'll get the same properties menu that we have on the charts that we've already seen. And I can say, right, let's make that a 20 period. It's a simple moving average. I don't want to calculate the high, low and close. I just want it on the close. And so I'm saying close is greater than moving average. Now, a really important distinction is between a signal and a filter. I would call this a filter is, or a condition is another way to, to talk about it. Is the close greater than the moving average? Yes, it is. That's going to be true for multiple days in a row, but not necessarily something that may signal me to trade. So what we have is then instead is something like a signal. So I could say instead of close greater than moving average, I want to say close crosses above. Let me just get a space in there. And you can see that Optima is prompting me crosses above, crosses below, or just crosses above or below, doesn't matter. But I'm going to say, I want to know when it's crosses above. And I need to remove that greater than. Uh, it's telling me the script is valid and we are good to go. So I'm looking for the S&P 500 for any securities where that has uh, happened today. And we can see that we've got a handful of them. Uh, so a number of stocks there. Uh, then what I can do is I could double click on an entry 
and it will show me a little arrow where this has happened and I can see that there and I could put on my uh, moving average 20 period um, and it's not quite the right one so I'm going to right click again go to the properties I'm going to say I want it to be closed and I want it to be simple and so that's exactly like we had and we can see that we were below the moving average yesterday but we're above it today the other thing I can do let's just close that chart in the background there is I can say let's export these results and I want to open these results as obviously many different types of charts but we're just going to keep it simple and open a watch list and now what's happening is just like we've seen before where we can have a watch list and we can link it to a symbol list this watch list is now linked to that scan and so I can have my charts here I can use my layout that I've used before and have that on my chart and then I can save this so let's just save this uh, workbook and we're going to call it uh, my scan workbook and now if we close this workbook and we reopen it you can see that list building again because Optima is going through and re-scanning finding if there's any new conditions so every day you open up your workbook that list will update with uh, all tickers that match the scan of what you're looking for so scanning is very powerful we touched very briefly on the scripting language we'll talk more about that in a future video and again as I said at learn.optimo.com we have a whole three-part um, course on scripting so you can learn how to become an absolute whiz at it if you choose to or you can consult with us and uh, we have a, a consultation service where you can get us to write your scripts for you if you just want to get it set up and, and running so hopefully that's been helpful we'll see you in another video